Hello, friend. Welcome to Live With Ease. My name is Julia, and we are back at CAP. And this time we are going to work on some or play with some variations. So this is what I like to call creative posture play. So finding fun, creative ways to explore movement in the posture of cat and a few things you'll need. Really, you'll need um, a folded blanket or towel, which you might not necessarily use. I like to use it under my knees just for added comfort if I'm going to hang out there for long periods of time and also a chair if you're someone who's going to implement the modifications. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Like, share the video, share the channel with someone who you think could benefit from this practice or any of the other practices on this channel. Be sure to send in those requests. I got a few, so I'm really excited to integrate them into the channel and be of service to you and offer uh, suggestions to practice certain poses or uh, specific themed practices. And the only other thing you'll need for this practice is your creative juices flowing and your open heart and your open body. Yeah. So cats are very playful, very, very playful little animals. So let's tap into that playful energy and get the spine and the limbs moving. All right, get into your comfy cozies, your yogi cozies, and we will see you on the mat or on the chair very soon. Alrighty, so why don't we get started? You can uh, find a comfortable seat, whether it's sitting on your heels, if you're using the chair or a bench or a piece of furniture, you can go ahead and sit on that, or you can sit on your folded blanket or towel or um, a cushion, bolster, whatever you have just finding a comfortable seat. And I just want to mention that most of these mm, creative, creative variations we're going to do, playful variations we're going to do in cat, most of them you can do in the modifications. Um, probably most of them in the modification where you're using a chair or a bench. I do recommend for this practice, to use something that's a bit longer. So whether it's a bench or a couch or a bed, okay? Uh, and then some of them may not be accessible in the seated modification. However, I will put um, in the box, the little video box just up above me here to the right, I will include some of the four actions of the spine, which we're gonna use for the play and the variations in cat. I'll show those in the seated, seated modification, okay? But some of the limb stuff we're gonna integrate using the, the arms and the legs, it might not be as, um, it might not be the same. It'll be slightly different, okay? So just keep an eye on, if you're using the modifications, keep an eye on that box right up in this part of the frame, <laughs> okay? All right, so. Finding that comfortable seat, ha, ha, stick out the tongue, take the jaw. <sighs> yeah, if you want to start by just shaking the hands and the arms, we'll just warm up the wrists and the hands a little bit. <sighs> so you can uh, add a bit of circling <sighs> in the hands and the wrists, good. <sighs> Using those fingers. Nice. And then let's take hold of that left, the left fingers with the right hand and just pushing, gently pushing that wrist forward and the palm forward. I don't want to force it too, too much that it feels like a strain. Just enough that I feel a little lengthening and release and then switch. Yeah, mm, you can keep your elbow bent and then the more you extend the elbow, you'll get a stronger sensation in the underneath the forearm. So just be mindful of that. Take whatever feels good. Nice. And then you're going to flip uh, the palm and then uh, gently press or bring the fingers towards you. If you want to place the back of the hand on the thigh or the leg. We don't want to weight bear here, but just take a little stretch. 
Keep breathing, keep exhaling, grounding through your sit bones. Ha. Good. And then kind of flick the fingers, shake it out, interlace the fingers, push the palms forward, up above the head. And then open the arms out. Let's do that two more times. Interlace the fingers, flip the palms, send the arms up. And open out one more. Interlace, flip. Ah, good. And then maybe roll the shoulders. Roll the elbows. And good. And shake it out. All right, let's come on to the hands and knees. So we're going to start with, or what we're going to do is, again, integrate the four movements of the spine, the four actions of the spine in our cat um, to invite some of the creativity and play. And, of course, this uh, folded blanket or towel I will use under my knees only because I, I sometimes it gets uncomfortable uh, hanging out on my knees for a long time just because they're a bit bony I got bony knees but if you are someone who finds it regardless of <laughs> um, the boniness it could be other things um, if you find it uncomfortable to kneel uh, you can place something under the knees or again you can take any of the modifications that um, we did in last week's video okay so Starting with flexion and extension, which is what we did in our modifications and our from the ground up. So that's flexion is where I dome the spine, let the head drop, and then moving into my extension. We also did a little bit of snaking through flexion and, and extension so I can uh, dome the spine, pelvis to heels, and scoop through. So those are some of the things we did. In the previous videos. Now something to invite a little extra release specifically in the upper body but you'll feel in the spine as well um, a fun little variation is I can step my left hand forward okay a little forward um, in front of um, further away from the right hand and then you're going to dome the spine. So here's my flexion. And then as I move into extension, I'm going to send the pelvis or the sit bones towards the heels, bending in the right elbow, turning my head away from that left arm. Oh, yeah, feel the length. You might feel a nice sensation down the left side of the rib cage, the armpit. Oh, yeah. And then inhale, dome. Exhale, extend. Nice. Inhale, flexion. Exhale, extension. So this is actually called leopard. So it's a variation of cat. Or a species. Or a certain type of cat. <laughs> good. Nice. Very good. And then you can switch sides. So I can place my left um, back beside the right. And then I'm going to step that right hand forward. Again, dome, flex the spine. And as I exhale, sending the sit bones towards the heels, bending in that left elbow, turning the head away from the right arm. Ah, yeah. Again, I want to keep thinking of lengthening the tailbone and the skull away from each other, whether I'm in flexion, extension, or any of the other movements of the spine will invite in. Yeah, so moving at your own pace here, in and out. You can also hang out for a few breaths if that appeals to you. Good. Nice. Groove it. So bringing that right hand back. Another uh, variation we can play with in flexion and extension. This one's a lot of fun. It's a little more, um, a little more work, a little more, uh, I, I don't want to say effort because you want to 
keep minimizing your effort. Like don't push too hard, but it will feel like a little more work. So I can draw my right knee in towards the forehead and then I can either extend the leg back or fore knee to forehead and leg back, lifting it, elevating it off the ground, keeping the skull heel. So maybe if there's a string attached from the, the tailbone to the heel, it's helping to lengthen the tailbone away from the skull. Again, moving in to flexion, extension. Nice. Beautiful. And then if you want to add some sauce to that, you can exhale and take the left arm off the ground as well to encourage the lengthening of the skull away from the heel, the tailbone. Good. Again, lower. Find your flexion. Find your extension. Mmm, delicious. Food for the spine, hydration for the spine. This is all so ah, delightful. Good. And then lower that right leg. Let's try the other side. So something I want to mention as you move into more of the balancing um, variation is make sure you keep breathing and utilizing the out breath and pouring the energy of the breath down the anchors, the pillars, the points of grounding, the points of contact, okay? So that um, it's not about lifting the arm or lifting the leg. It's like the more I exhale the breath through the bones to ground, it's almost like the limbs are floating off lightly, effortlessly, yeah? I know easier said than done, but keep practicing that. Keep integrating the breath with the movement because that's going to create a bit more ease and fluidity in your movements, yeah? And help build strength without creating tension. So we don't need to always over-engage everything and squeeze everything, because that just brings the bones closer together and um, can create um, lack of mobility or less mobility in the joints, yeah? Shortening the, the, the space in the joints. So. Let's draw the left knee to forehead into flexion. <sighs> Extension, lengthen the leg back. Again, your leg doesn't have to elevate. I can keep it on the ground. And then when you decide to add the arm, you can also keep the leg on the ground. Or you can take the leg off, elevate, float. Yeah, I'm still breathing. Can I still talk? That's an indication of whether or not I'm holding my breath. So take a variation that feels like you can still create breath flow. Ha! Very nice. Nice work, everyone. Keep breathing, keep moving. Yas. Nice. Then return that left knee back on the ground. If you want to do a little bit of sneaking through, always feels good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you uh, want to extend both hips um, to sort of counteract the hip flexion we've been taking, you can rest the pelvis on the heels or um, if you're in your chair, you can take this to a wall where you just kind of, uh, you might not do this portion where I um, sit on my heels, but you can go from a squat, dome, and find your cobra. So you can go in and out. This is just a nice way to counteract uh, hip flexion just to create a bit ex of extension in both the hips, or you can just rest the elbows on the ground or forehead to hands, then the knees rock the legs side to side. 
and just take a few moments to do that. Again, check out the top right part of the frame. Or I guess if you're watching it, it would be your left, my right. <laughs> Good. Nice. Good. And then when you're ready, let's come back onto the hands and knees. Alrighty. So we did flexion and extension. There are four movements of the spine. We have flexion, extension, side bending, and twisting. So we just did some fun <sighs> variations of flexion and extension. Now we'll invite some side bending. One of my favorites. Oh, so good, so good for the side of the body and the rib cage, and it invites a bit more um, ease in the breath so that the, mm, the breathing can become more efficient, yeah? Good. So side bending. One variation of side bending I can take here, which is true side bending, is I wanna keep my gaze on the ground, and I'm gonna bring my, let's do the right first, the right shoulder and right pelvis towards each other, keeping both feet, both knees, both hands evenly planted so I'm not shifting. I wanna keep pouring the weight equally, and then I'm gonna shift to left shoulder to left pelvis. Again, keeping my gaze, I can tilt the head, but I want to avoid turning the head to look at my booty, even though, you know, you want to admire your booty. I get it. Um, but keep the gaze to the ground because what this is doing is creating a true side bend because then your neck can get the side bend rather than the twist. This becomes a twist in the cervical spine, which is the, the neck. And we want to keep that side bend. Mm hmm. So this is more you can think of more like a dog here, like a dog wagging its tail. Yeah. Good. Yeah. If you want to take a quicker movement with the pelvis side to side, very good. All right. So another variation of side bending, which this is like my jam my variation that I love, is you're going to walk your hands over to the right, okay? So as I take my hands to one side, we'll go to the right for now, is I can implement flexion, extension, I can also snake through, Yeah, and then I can also add that leopard variation. So I can step, if I walk to the right, I'm gonna step my left hand forward and then dome the spine. As I move into extension, I'm not gonna send the sit bones sideways leaning into the left leg. I want to think of sit bones, tailbone, going straight back towards the heels, turning the head away from the left arm, the heel, the sit bones uh, don't need to touch. In fact, they're, they probably shouldn't because we want to keep that extension that they're going towards the heels, but also towards the wall behind you. Good. And then I can inhale, dome. Exhale, extend. Mm. Doesn't that just feel delicious? Nice. Good. And then if you want, you can add, so I can bring my left hand back to meet my right here in the side bend. I can take my left leg back and maybe cross it over the right a little bit. Finding that length through the heel, skull. I can also roll inward the left leg inward, find a little, ooh, a nice little lengthening sensation on the side of the left side of the waist. You might feel it in the ribs, depends where your tension lies. Nice. Mm. 
Good, good, good. Great. Bending that left leg. Walk yourself back to the center and then walking to the left. We'll repeat that on the left side so you can invite that flexion. Extension. You can keep with the flexion and extension in this way. Or if you're, uh, just be mindful of your low back here. If there's any twinging, you know, reduce the side bend and just check in and see what feels good. I can do my snaking through. Again, be mindful of your low back. Mm -hmm. And then I can also mm, invite my leopard variation, stepping that right hand forward, dome the spine, exhale, tailbone, sit bones towards the heels, towards the wall, turning the head away from the right arm. Again, keep breathing, keep, um, keep inviting the exhalation to the release into the movement. Mm -hmm. A release into the points of grounding. Yeah, allow the out breath to help you with releasing the weight of the bones towards the ground or deeper into the ground. Nice. Good. And then bring the right back to meet the left and you're going to extend that right leg back and cross it over. Mm -hmm. Roll along the ball of the foot. You can internally rotate that left or that right hip, right leg. Ooh. Yeah, it's not as strong on this side for me as it was on the other. Good. Awesome. And then bringing that right leg back, walk yourself back to the center. And the last movement of the spine is a twist. And this is such a great one to counteract all the moving, we were, all the other movements we were doing in the spine. Um, rotating is such a nice way to release any extra bit of tension. It feels so good. And it's um, energizing yet soothing, detoxifying, rotations are the best. I love them. Okay, so we have an open rotation or open twist and a closed twist. So moving into the open twist first, what I can do is take my right hand to my sacrum, the back of my sacrum and pelvis. As I exhale, ground through the points of contact, lengthen through the skull and tailbone. I'm going to turn, rotate my spine towards the ceiling. I can keep thinking of lengthening that sacrum tailbone away from the skull. I can move in and out. Keep lengthening, lengthening, lengthening. Mm -hmm. And then to the close twist, what you could do is then release that right hand from the back of the pelvis, slide it between um, the legs and the supporting arm, the left arm, feed it through, tuck the chin under, rest the side of the skull on the ground. Placing that left hand is your support. Good. And make sure you tuck the chin so we're not in this extension in the neck, that we have a nice long neck. And then I can come in and out of that open twist, closed twist, grounding through both knees, feet, Good. As I open into the twist, I can even take the arm up towards the ceiling. 
if that feels inviting. Uh -huh. So again, I can move in and out at my own pace. I can hang out for a few breaths. Oh yeah, I just had a nice pop there. Spontaneous adjustment, love those. <laughs> and then in your twist here, you can also play with extending that left leg back and placing the left hand kind of above the skull. <sighs> mm -hmm. You can also kind of take that leg out to the side for more stability. Keep releasing the bones into the ground so I'm not tensing and holding too much. I can support through my bones and let the, the musculature around the bones relax. Good. Return the leg back. If you took it out to the side, bending in the knee, return the hand back to the side. And one last open and release to the ground. Good. Let's try the other side. So again, I can open out. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen that sacrum, tailbone, skull. Mm -hmm. mm, nice. And then I can feed my arm through. Mm -hmm. So again, that arm is going between, the left arm is going between the right arm and the legs. Dropping the chin, rest the side of the skull. Use that right hand as support, not tensing and pushing or pressing. Just as extra support here, an extra foundation. And can I keep thinking of that tailbone lengthening away, skull lengthening, long neck. So again, I'm not crunching and, and um, compressing in the neck. Nice and long. Good. And again, I can open, and open the arm out, left arm up towards the ceiling, feed it through. Opening out. Oh, again, go at your own pace. Again, you can move in and out. You can hang out for a few breaths. You can extend that right leg back, taking the right arm or hand above the head. Or you can slide that right leg to the side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm, energizing, creative posture play. So much fun. So many things we can do in different postures. Ah, oh, that just give us a little extra bit of energy, life, increase our movement repertoire. It's great. Feel our bodies in a way maybe that we haven't felt before, thought we was impossible, then you realize when you slowly build and slowly move, integrate the breath with the movement, you can do more than you think you can. That's what I find with a lot of my patients or clients is they'll, you know, as I get them to slowly breathe, connect the breath to the body and the movements, they're like, whoa, I didn't think I could do that. So it's, it's pretty special. We just got to keep doing a little bit of it every day. So when you're satisfied with the twist, you can come back to the center. Again, we can dome and snake through a few times. And then another beautiful way to counteract what we were doing is some circling in the rib cage. So I can imagine that I'm kind of kneeling in a barrel and the barrel's kind of on its side and the opening's out in front. And I'm seeing if I can touch each part of the inner wall of the barrel with the rib cage spine, sternum. Yeah. 
circling and then reverse the circle yeah make sure the head isn't held or the neck isn't held tightening let it be a silent passenger let it just come for the ride good and then can we do the same thing in the pelvis if i imagine a pencil attached to the the bottom of my uh sorry tailbone and the lead piece is at the wall behind me and i'm drawing circles on the wall behind me with my tailbone and my pelvis sit bones good and then make sure you reverse beautiful nice and then take a moment to shift back into a child's pose or rest the pelvis on the heels Take a moment here as you exhale to release. <sighs> the sit bones, the pelvis. Towards the heels, skull to ground. Good. And again, from here, I can go from cat to cobra, or I can go into sphinx, which is basically cobra on my elbow and forearms, or forehead, two hands, bend the knees, rock the legs side to side. So I'll do all three variations. So from child's doming through cat to cobra is one variation. Again, nice long spine. And I can go between those movements in and out a few times. Or again, you can come on to the forearms, elbows. You can focus on lengthening the tailbone skull. You can add a little bit of flexion and extension here. Or I can rest my forehead on my hands, bend the knees, and rock the legs side to side. Mm -hmm. And in um, the modifications, it might feel nice to come onto the belly if you can and do a little bit of rocking of the legs side to side. Mm. Good. Nice. And then rest either on the belly. You can flip over onto your back. And just take a few moments to rest, absorb all the beautiful movement, the delicious movement you gave your spine, your shoulders, your legs today. And as you continue to rest, I just want to say thank you for joining me in this practice. Of course, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment boxes below and or any requests. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share the channel with someone who you think would benefit from these practices or this practice. Just keep moving, keep breathing, keep integrating the breath with the movement. And remember, go at your own pace. It's your body, your breath, your rhythm. So you know best uh, how far you can go. Listen to your body. All right. I'll leave you with this final mantra. Think love, speak love, be love. Thank you very much and have an excellent, excellent day. Until next time, peace into your best life.